Hey! Look, my tree is starting to have more stuff. So that's cool. There's presents from Poppy and Doug. There's a present from BLD that was the UPS, Operation UPS. And then there's like Jess and that around here and stuff. So that's cool. I thought it might be cool if I went through my record collection with you guys. Would you guys like that? I'm gonna get my records down because I fancy listening to a record anyway. So I'm gonna get my records down, show you what I've got. So there's quite a few in there I think that might be like everyone will go, oh, obviously. But I also think that there might be some in there that are a little bit controversial for like what I like. And then see if there's any that you think I'm missing. There's any that you like. Comment down below if there are any that are your favorites or if you haven't heard any yet and let's see what we've got here they're all in alphabetical order so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna like separate them all the first one in my list of like things and i need to get cover for this is calm by five sauce this album is one of the best albums that five sauce have ever done my favorite five sauce album is sounds good feels good but this one is a definite close second this has just got some incredible stuff on it like i mean red desert is a great opening song but wildflower best years this is such an la album do you know what i mean this is just a, this is brilliant very easily a five source classic the next one is one of my favorite albums of all time i actually don't think i could live without this album the 1975 self-titled album the first debut one the debut first is debut that they came out with but this album is just one of my favorite albums of all time like hands down this is definitely on a recommendation list of anyone who actually wants to listen to something but the great thing i love about the fact like i got this to either last christmas or the christmas before the great thing about this album is that i don't know if they've done it on any of their other ones because i've only got this one of 1975 but they printed it so the way the old ones were printed were because they didn't have the enhancements uh, like that we have today for music and they printed it with the crackle so it sounds like a vintage vinyl and it's just so clever i love this album a lot the next one i have is a band called america if you don't know who they are listen amazing they sang um horse with no name which is a classic they sang venture highway they have like way more hits up their sleeve i'm blurry but this is a live album and i haven't actually listened to this yet but i found it in so we have a lot of stores in my hometown that have like random junk sales and all this kind of stuff like just these random little stores that sell they're not necessarily antique shops but there's like sections of these shops that have like little underground sections that have records in that you can just flick through through, and i'm sure there are plenty of other places up and down up around the world that have that but this is where i got this and i only paid like three pounds for it so yeah i was all for this the next one is like my mom oh, i don't know if it's my mom's but i know for a fact i think it's my sister's i know for a fact i think oxymoron i'm pretty sure it's my sister's favorite album of all time and it's pet sounds by the beach boys this album <laughs> is amazing <laughs> if you haven't heard this this has got most of the beach boys classics on there we've got wouldn't it be nice sloop john b let's go away for a while god only knows pet sounds caroline no like seriously definitely worth it if you haven't heard it already the next one is my <sighs> I have two favourite Beatles albums. This is one of them, Abbey Road. This album is just full of classics and the way that they put it together, I am a, I'm such a fan of listening to albums twice in a row. But I'm also a fan of really paying attention to how they put the tracks in order because a lot of people who aren't musicians or in the music industry don't seem to understand why that is a thing. Like it's people put albums as like a like the songs on an album they do it to a fluidity of how it should go if that makes sense they do it in a certain way on purpose so that you can go through a certain emotion and then feel something else all the way through that's the whole point of it otherwise if they did it differently it would just sound messy this album does it beautifully and this album is so full of amazing songs like come together something maxwell silver hammer oh darling octopus's garden here comes the sun like honestly seriously one of the best albums like the best Beatles albums ever honestly I love oh I love it so much the next one is my all-time favorite Beatles album and I grew up with this Sgt Peppers now I know that this seems like a controversial thing because a lot of people would say the white album is their favorite this was played in my dad's car growing up for years it's just a little piece of me like I I grew up consistently listening to the tapes and I'm pretty sure it's a double cassette actually I could be wrong pretty much listened to Sgt Peppers throughout the whole of my childhood and a 60s tape that he had it was that and this I can't fault this 
this album. There is nothing wrong with this album. The next one I haven't actually listened to yet, Blondie. And I picked it up at a record store who sells like secondhand and proper vintage records and things. They have got new ones. They're like a mixture. So they get like brand new ones in. They'll get random ones from like, I don't know, boot fairs and stuff. Like, I don't even know where they get them, but he just gets all these records in and I'm like, how did you find this? But sometimes he's got multiple prints. So he has like new prints and then like severely old ones and then original prints and stuff. And this is an original print Blondie. And I was so pleased when I found it because I really love Blondie. It's got one way or another. It's got Sunday Girl, Heart of Glass. I'm just really pleased that I picked this up. And look how beautiful Debbie Harry is. The next one is an amazing album. I'm not even gonna attempt to explain. If you don't know what that is, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. What a bang of an album. Next. The next one I was super pleased to pick up. I actually pre-ordered it. It's Voice Notes by Charlie Puth. But this is one of my babies. This is one of my favorite albums of all time as well. This is the limited edition pink vinyl. So it's literally, it's hot electric pink. The next one I haven't listened to yet, but this is an original print also. He's just a legend. There is nothing more to say. Changes, David Bowie, honestly. The next one is the soundtrack to my favorite chick flick because I'm sorry, this soundtrack is amazing. Dirty Dancing soundtrack is just full of some amazing 60s songs. Not only Time of My Life, Had the Time of My Life, but it's got Be My Baby, She's Like the Wind is obviously done for the film. Hungry Eyes, Stay, Yes, You Don't Own Me, Hey Baby, Overload, Love is Strange, Where Are You Tonight, and In the Still of the Night. This album, I'm sorry, that's every track. Every single track on there, there is not a flaw. In my opinion, there is no flaw. The next one I also haven't listened to yet, but I like him, so I bought it. I think I got, <laughs> I think I got this at a boot fair, it's Don Williams, but I am a country music fan all the way through. The next one is an absolute classic, but if I hadn't worked in the pub with the jukebox we had, I would never have known of this album, and a lot of people are gonna be shocked by that when they see it. It is the Eagles Hotel California. Yeah, that's all right. If you asked me what this album was seven years ago, I would never have been able to tell you. This is an original prim in mint condition. <laughs> mint condition, and I picked it up for seven pounds. So I was very happy with that. And I remember listening to it about a day after I got it. You can hear the vintage vinyl crackle and it makes me so happy. Do you know what? I used to I used to take my parents' records and listen to them and that's all I knew. So growing up, like a lot of people nowadays will know that vinyls were like a thing back then, but they won't ever have seen their collection. They'll go back to like a new, like a new old collect, kind of like what my collection is now, you know, I've bought vintage ones from other shops, but they won't really have had like a parent or something who had a collection or they've never really heard one that wasn't that crisp and that clear. And to me, that's what a vinyl is. I love that vinyl crackle because I grew up listening to that vinyl crackle. I also found it funny as well that my parents only exposed me to the vinyls they wanted me to see. My dad had a stash of vinyls that I never knew about and he only introduced me to them when my sister bought me my vinyl player for Christmas. He actually had my mum chaperone me to the room. I must have been about 23, 23, 24, and said don't let her scratch or bugger up any of the Cream records. My dad was a freaking rock and roll star and like all of these rock bands and I was like, how did I not know this? And my mum, growing up, I don't ever remember really listening to the Rolling Stones. It was always the Beatles that I knew of. My mum had a double album of the Rolling Stones. The first song on it was Brown Sugar which gets played consistently in the pub. So I know exactly what it sounds like. I play it on the vinyl player and it just kept going diddling, diddling, diddling. And I was like, this is going on a bit too long. And I saw my stylus got stuck. She nearly buggered out my stylus because her, like, whenever it came out, like what, 19 year old self couldn't help herself back from playing it over and over again that she'd scratched it to pieces and it was ruining my record player. <laughs> yeah, my parents were rock and roll. The next one is another Eagles album. It's a greatest hits album though. So it's got things like Tequila Sunrise and Take It Easy, Lion Eyes, Already Gone, Desperado. There's like some really amazing songs on here. So yeah, I was really pleased with this one and it was only six pounds. Also an original print. I got them from the same people as well. I picked up both the Eagles albums and I was like, how? The next one is one of my personal ones. It's not, I bought this brand new and is songs I wrote with Amy by Ed Sheeran. This was one of the first albums I ever heard of Ed Sheeran. I fell in love with it. This is actually the album that really got me onto Ed Sheeran. This was before he released any of his other stuff. So he did songs I wrote with Amy, Loose Change. This was the one that got me hooked because I, I loved every bit 
of it and then that year he was at reading and i was like oh i really want to go see him he'd only just released a team like he hadn't released an album like a full-on album it was just eps and a team and you need me but when i found this it was just the a team and huge huge love for ed sheeran but this album is gorgeous it's an ep songs are right with amy if you haven't heard it i would highly recommend it it's absolutely lyrically and musically as well because most of it is literally done just on his acoustic guitar there is nothing else in it he pretty much does the percussion and everything else on his acoustic guitar so like when you see him live that's pretty much what this is with another person as well it's amazing it's so good highly recommend the next one i think my sister gave me elvis i haven't heard this one though but i don't really know what classics it has on it I've got blue suede shoes that's all right shake rattle and roll so there are some good ones on here i'm not going to dispute that i just haven't heard it properly yet so i'll definitely give this a listen soon oh my next one i found in a charity shop and i could not believe it and it's in really good condition as well the music from fantasia disney it's not all of the music as far as i know no so we've got takata and fuji i can never say that track by buck sorcerer's apprentice obviously i grew up with classical music because i played it my entire life so i know all of the classical musicians that way but to pronounce their names no <laughs> dance of the hours by Poncili, which oh honestly that song i'm just so happy i found this right the next one i have two copies of and i'll tell you why joe <laughs> gabe i got this copy which we've had for as long as i can remember but someone gave it to me this is one of my favorite movies of all time and my favorite movie musical soundtrack but my sister went the extra mile one day and found an authenticated hand signed by olivia newton john and john travolta copy which is i'm not playing this there is no way i'm playing this no this is not getting played at all this is like a it's a hand sign so i don't know if you can see the next one i could not have lived without this album this album got me through a lot of shit this album was a big pivotal album i had growing up along with the black parade really shaped a lot of who i am today and it is green day american idiot this is one of my favorite albums of all time i could not live without this this really has this album is just honestly my favorite song ever by green day is on this album and it's jesus of suburbia and i love it i love how it's so funny someone always puts it on the jukebox for me when they're in like when this customer is in he'll always put it on the jukebox for me and i'm like yep you know 10 minutes of pure bliss for me yeah this uh, this album has just an emotional roller coaster and especially after seeing green day live this album means way more to me now like i got to see him say the representative of california has the floor in california that is one of the best concerts i think i've ever been to the man is just insane all of them are amazing the drummer jesus billy joe armstrong is just an inspiration the next one i got when i was at their show with my sister and it's a hand signed by all four members i don't think i've listened to this yet one either a blemish in the great light by half moon run Half Moon Run is the band that I've seen most times live. They're phenomenal. If you ever get the chance to watch one of their live videos, I would do it. And if you ever get the chance to get tickets, do it. But this album is like a turning point for their genre. It's just, it's amazing. It's got a mixture of everything on here. There's blues, there's country, indie, there's rock, there's grit. You know, there's like, there's a lot of dark. They have their own genre. They're really hard to describe. But if you're gonna listen to this album, A Blemish in the Great Light by Half Moon Rum, my favorite song personally on this whole album is Black Diamond and Jello on My Mind. That is such a good song. But yeah, that's absolutely amazing. The next one I got is an obvious, I'm not even gonna explain it. It's Harry Styles' debut album. This is the white one that he brought out as well. And the next one, I fought tooth and nail <laughs> for this album. I finally found it still sealed never been used and i paid like 52 quid for it it's fine line the people who know will know yeah now you know why i paid so much it's the bottle green edition the limited edition bottle green double vinyl that he had printed and sold out everywhere i managed to get one this also is a perfect example this album is a perfect example of telling a story through the track listing organization like the way that you organized it it's just a breakup and a grief in like the whole way it goes boy meets girl boy gets girl boy loses girl boy doesn't get girl again boy accepts grief it's amazing the next one i'm very pleased that i found this one because i'm a huge huge fan of this person but i paid five pound for this in the same place that i got the eagles one original print uh james taylor carolina on my mind something in the way she moves sweet baby james has got fire and rain country road you've got a friend 
how sweet it is. This album is just amazing. And I've, I have listened to this one and I was just like, oh, I feel so relaxed. A lot of Charlie Puth's influences are in James Taylor and you can hear it when you hear the album. So yeah, I would highly recommend that one. Uh, this is the one I got muddled with, but it's Jim Crochet. <laughs> Jim Crochet is great. Um, this is I Have To Say I Love You in a song. He did uh, Time In A Bottle, You Don't Mess Around With Jim. He's just amazing, but he's on the same wave as uh, James Taylor. So yeah, great, great person to listen to, Jim Crochet. I would highly recommend it, but it's not spelt crochet. The next one is my favourite album of all time. All time. <laughs> I've said that some of them are one of my favourite albums of all time. This one is my favourite album of all time. I cried when I first saw him live and I cried when my sister bought me this for my, my Christmas present one year. It's Continuum by John Mayer. This man can tell a story. He is the perfect example on every single album he has ever done. He makes the track listing in such a way that it's just so, oh my God, like you can, you can feel it. It's just, it's gorgeous. This album I could listen to every day for the rest of my life. It is amazing. Best song on the album, Vultures. Fight me on it. Now I have a collection of this one next person quite a few so i am just gonna put them all here and i'm just gonna pick up one but there's like five in this one sleeve plus two here is johnny cash honestly the man is just he's country king i have seven albums of johnny cash is it seven or do i have more than that seven albums of johnny cash these are all on the railroad collection and i got them all at a boot sale i couldn't believe it i was like yep okay and then i found another two in the jailhouse now Oh, what a song that is. He's in the jailhouse now. Great song. The next one is also fighting Greece on my favourite musical movie of all time. And I, oh my God. If there was ever an opportunity to direct this on the West End or on Broadway, I would literally just wish I could be number one because I have had the idea in my head for so long now. Like I want, I wish that they would just go, yeah, we need a director for this. And I'd be like, me please la la land this is in my top five favorite movies of all time hands down the soundtrack to this is just sorry there's another one stuck to it <laughs> again it got me through such a dark place but this film got me through a dark place anytime i felt like i couldn't go to los angeles or like i just missed my friends or something i could watch this film see the scenery and realize why i love it just as much it's almost like loads of people have a vision board because the law of attraction people have vision boards of like the car that they want or the house that they want or the dog that they want or their ideal job anything you can literally do it and you put it up around you and it's a manifestation technique this is my manifestation technique the more i watch it the more i realize that that's what i want i want to live in california and that is my end goal is california and i'm just, i'm welling up just thinking about it so i apologize i know the house i want as well and i've been keeping an eye on it for about six years this is my end goal means a lot to me uh the next one is journey because a lot of people think that it's too mainstream to like journey but i'm sorry i'm a mainstream bitch if that's the case because journey are epic the next one's been in my family for i don't know how long but this one i was playing it on repeat when i was just learning like i could just about walk i was using the record player and playing this over and over and over and over and over and over again the mary poppins soundtrack mary poppins is my uh get well film my main two are mary poppins and the wizard of oz like i'll watch those two if i'm feeling sad and under the weather and i need to just feel a little bit better about life or if i'm genuinely sick and i'm like bunged up and need some soup or i'm throwing up and i just need to lay in bed mary poppins is my main go-to movie or the wizard of oz but mary poppins is and i used to play this on repeat when i was younger but i always remember i remember um in the life i lead when he walks in it always makes me laugh in the film as well when they can't find the children and he walks up and just like how jealous is the life i lead and she's like george they're missing yes 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 dear <laughs> your kids are missing pay attention the next one is one of my favorite bands and i'm so glad i found them by myself you know when you find bands by yourself and you're proud of yourself because you found them and someone else didn't have to show you and then like you you haven't got the whole lecture of well i showed you that band no no one showed me this i found them i love the album i love the song i showed other people the midnight also this is my favorite midnight album ever but this is one of the best albums ever days of thunder by the midnight this album is 80s new synth wave pure bliss if you're gonna listen to a song for the first time on yet here i would either go los angeles or the year's prologue which is the first one the next one is my mum's favorite all-time band the monkeys but again original print 
very pleased with this and it's got everything on here we've got last train to clarksville not your stepping stone i'm a believer theme for the monkeys little bit me little bit you pleasant valley sunday daydream believer this album is just amazing the next one my boss got me or my brother i had never actually listened to this album and i only ever knew one of their songs properly i never really listened to them and it made me appreciate rock more when i did hear this album but he knew that i got a record player that year at christmas and said everyone who has a record player needs to own this album he just randomly bought it for me one day i feel that's what he said he went i feel it's nirvana never mind when he gave it to me i was like oh okay cool thank you i'm really appreciative and then i was like you know what i really fancy listening to nirvana even though i'd only ever known smells like teen spirit i didn't really know any of their other stuff at the time this album changed my whole perception on the type of rock they were it changed my perception on how i felt about dave grohl also controversial opinion let's not get into that i love dave grohl as a person i think he's amazing i just personally don't like his singing voice it wasn't nirvana that changed my mind for me because obviously in nirvana he doesn't sing he drums and he's a he's a phenomenal well, let's not get into how amazing he is as a drummer and a guitarist as a musician he's just amazing i bet you if my friend ben is watching this he's probably like wanting to kill me right now because he loves he loves dave grohl i love Dave Grohl and I've always loved Dave Grohl I think he's amazing and I love that he appreciates young minds and he appreciates the evolution of music rather than being stuck inside one like one feeling of music and thinking that no new music is not music meh. he actually listens to people he's very admirable as a human being I would love to meet him one day and just pick his brains however I'm not necessarily a massive Foo Fighters fan I never used to be a Foo Fighters fan regardless like I, I really didn't like the Foo Fighters ever controversial opinion i listened to a couple of their songs without knowing it was the food fighters and i went oh i like this and someone went it's the foos i was like no way and it's not one of those things where like i never understand okay tangenting completely never mind this is literally never mind nirvana great album i would highly recommend i just have to say also gave me a massive love for kurt cobain oh seriously but i never understand when people do this thing where they have like a pride of music do you know what i mean like if you can adapt yourself to not give a crap about what other people think just like what you like i really don't understand it when people go oh my god oh god is that like harry styles oh i liked that song though that's really annoying that i like a harry styles song oh it doesn't mean i like every harry styles song and it's like why does it matter just like what you like like i've i figured out apparently i like some food fighter stuff and i was like oh and the only reason why it annoyed me was because i was like oh well i know now that loads of food fighters people are gonna like that i've told that i don't like food fighters are gonna be like ha i told you other than that it didn't bother me yeah okay i like food fighters i like some of their songs i'm not the biggest fan but i like a couple of their songs and i'm happy to admit that now if you'd asked me that like 10 years ago i would be like Mm -mm. I don't see where it's wrong to admit that you like something that someone else might not like or would be considered unlikable or commercial or something like just like what you like and be proud of it because whatever you enjoy in the end is making up the person you are today and that's all that matters this one is also one of my favorite albums of all time and the favorite album in my opinion that they've ever made for by One Direction. It was the last ever album they did with Zayn, but this album is gorgeous. Midnight Memories, don't get me wrong, phenomenal album again. It was just so good. Like, I love all of their albums. This one was very grown up, and I was like, wow, okay, it's all different now. Where Do Broken Hearts Go? It's probably one of my favorite One Direction songs of all time, but Fool's Gold is just stunning. Night Changes, Fireproof, Stockholm Syndrome. Like, this is a definite high recommend. Highly recommend this album. The next one is another One Direction album and it is made in the AM. These were both also bought by my brother. He bought these for me for my birthday. This is also the other amazing album that they did, sadly without Zayn. I mean, if I could fly. That song is just spine tinglingly gorgeous. And it always takes me back as well to when I saw Harry live with Sophie when we went. The vlog is up on my channel with that. And the moment that he started singing that and he was playing it and everyone was just singing it back to him. Oh my God, it just gives me chills now. Long Way Down is such an underrated song as well. I, I love One Direction. <laughs> So. The next one I think is only excerpts from because I haven't listened to it properly yet. I picked this up because it's got my all time favourite piece of classical music on it. And it's by my all time, the whole record is by my all time favourite classical musician and that is Tchaikovsky. It is excerpts from The Nutcracker, which is my favourite ballet. The Arabian Dance, which is just gorgeous. You'll know uh, songs from The Nutcracker if you have seen Fantasia because most of the beginning of Fantasia, the first half before The Sorcerer's Apprentice is all from Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Dance of the Merlitons, 
beautiful song. Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy is on here. My favourite of all time, though, is Waltz of the Flowers. That is my favourite. Okay. Okay, the perfect thing here. The intro to this vlog that you are watching right now, when it goes, it's Christmas day! And then it goes into a piece of music. That is Waltz of the Flowers from Tchaikovsky. It's the best piece of classical music ever because the dynamics of that musically are just stunning. Oh, they're stunning. As someone who trained in classical, I can appreciate that a lot <laughs> this next one i got i was in brighton and i remember picking it up he tried to make a deal with me and i was like i actually don't want the other one so i ended up i think i just got this one and it's a who album but i'm pretty sure it's a classic it's a, yeah the story of the who it's the original 1976 uk press the original booklet and it's a double lp in mint condition i paid 16 pound for this actually no i think i only paid about 14. I just can't believe this is an original Who album. The Who! I first heard The Who and actually appreciated them. So, okay, in the pub, we have a lot of like rock, rock stuff. When I first started working there, Steely Dan, as far as I know, weren't on the jukebox. It was always The Who, The Stones, The Eagles, The Kinks, and stuff like that. So we had like a lot of um, the Beatles weren't even on there. The Who, I remember being so excited that Substitute was on there because School of Rock was another album that shaped who I am today. School of Rock came about around the same time that I found Green Day and it really helped me appreciate rock for what it is and it's just amazing. And it's the reason why I love rock it's the reason why i let my music evolve into punk and why i let it evolve into 80s classic rock it's just amazing and i was so glad to have found school of rock i remember it was my 10th birthday party i'm lying it was my 12 and i had all of my friends i was in year seven and i had all of my friends from year six from my previous school over for a sleepover and my friend ellie had bought me the school of rock album because she knew i loved the film so much i was ecstatic i'm not even joking i still have that cd it's scratched a buggery because i played it non-stop i played it every day and once it was finished i play it again is one of my favorite albums ever and i'm surprised i don't actually have that on vinyl i don't even think they do it on vinyl just the soundtrack because now the musical on stage has come out there's like new music and it's just not the same the original album has not only got the original school of rock song on it or clips from the movie like loads of little excerpt bits but it's got some incredible songs on there it's got sunshine of your love on there by cream it's got substitute by the who oh god i'm trying to remember who sang it my brain is hanging upside down oh who sang that someone who can tell me saying it but the album is just phenomenal this who album as well i'm pretty sure what got me right yeah it's got the songs on here already the first few songs i'm reading i'm like yes magic bus substitute boris the spider my generation i can see for miles pinball wizard i'm free won't get fooled again behind blue eyes baba o'reilly this album is amazing. <laughs> the next one is Bay. Youngblood's first full album, 21st Century Liability. Uh, he's in a straight jacket. This is the album where he kind of went, I'm just going to come out with this and say what I want to say because I'm angry as fuck and the government is shit. <laughs> That's pretty much why he did this album. My favourite songs on here are Doctor Doctor, Machine Gun, I Love You Will You Marry Me, Kill Somebody. And the video for Kill Somebody is literally like okay in a good way like I, I love the fact that he does videos that people are too scared to do but need to be said and kill somebody is like okay it's like when a horror film plays really happy music but it's a really twisted what you're watching and you're a bit like i'm really uncomfortable with this that's basically the majority of his videos and i love that he channels that because it's so messed up psychotic kids is also like that you know you're listening to a song and you're like this is a bit of a mind fuck <laughs> medication as well his videos are just amazing even now cotton candy is a great video hopefully the underrated youth is a great video man he really went hard on the message for for that but i love his videos when he just makes you kind of twitch a bit <laughs> the only way i can describe it the next one is we're coming to the end now as you can tell because i've gone alphabetically the hope for the underrated youth ep my favorite song on this if i go in order brain dead waiting on the weekend casual sabotage parents hope for the underrated youth original me but parents and hope for the underrated youth can be swapped a bit because sometimes i'm in the mood for one they're very different on the feelings level and obviously the last one weird we all know i've got this and i've listened to this way more since i've last spoken to you i'm sorry my favorite song that he's ever written has got to be god's me but don't 
don't drown me out that song hits my heartstrings more than anyone can imagine and it just explains everything that i have to say to people just watch the video and it explains absolutely everything a lot of people are probably feeling especially in this year but it's just the best song he's ever done hands down that's my vinyl collection and i feel like now i don't actually know what the time is and whether i've got time to listen to one now but yeah that was kind of fun thank you for going on this vinyl journey with me i will see you in tomorrow's vlogmas <laughs>